first of all i would like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting me for a uh, presentation on uh, computation intelligence on the five day fdp program supported by uh, adal aict uh, this uh, adal uh, aict uh, actually they are uh, supporting most of the uh, colleges and universities for conducting five day uh, workshop and this is uh, one among that particular workshop and uh, i'm happy to be uh, in this particular fdp to provide a uh, a talk on computation intelligence uh, as far as uh, computation intelligence is uh, considered uh, it is one of the very booming uh, technology uh, that that is been uh, needed uh, for uh, uh, most of the applications and in between uh, in my talk uh, if anybody is having uh, doubt or something like that you can uh, can have uh, uh, you can just ask me so that we, we will have discussions in between so when we have discussions and it will be uh, the 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 talk, talk will be fruitful so uh, the entire computation intelligence starts with uh, uh, the working of uh, uh, understanding about the brain how it works because people started from uh, long back to understand about the brain and they started analyzing each and every part as you know that uh, you are having uh, two different portions of the brain one portion which will be dealing with the motor activation region uh, of the of the body parts and another region which is dealing with the uh, sensory uh, region of the body parts so uh, we have five senses one uh, we are able to see it so we are having a sensor called eye and through this uh, uh, eye uh, we are able to see several things it means that this this sensor is getting a uh, giving a signal to the brain and the sensory region of the eye on the brain uh, it tries to get that signal and try to process it and uh, you are able to uh, perceive what you are able to see and uh, uh, similarly you are having a ear where through the ear you are able to hear it means that it is a sensor uh, that sensor gets a signal and the signal is again going to the sensory region of the uh, brain uh, the ear here each each body part is having a sensor region so here you have here you have a sensor region for there there the signal goes and the signal is being interpreted in several ways and you have a uh, nose where you are getting it is also a sensor uh, that sensor gets uh, uh, smell signals and the signals are reaching the brain and it is trying to interpret you are having tongue and uh, you are having touch sensitivity so so many sensors are there through the sensors uh, we are getting signals to the brain and once it gets the uh, signal uh, it try to interpret and do certain activities suppose you are trying to catch something called a uh, uh, hot glass of water very hot uh, in a steel glass if it is there we are trying to catch it once you try to catch it uh, the sensory uh, portion uh, the cells on your hand will get a temperature you will feel that it is too hot that that information should reach the brain that brain should give a control signal to your hand so there is a control region for your hand so the brain should in turn after understanding the temperature that signal should go to the brain it is too hot and and the, from the control region of the brain you should get a control on your hand what control you have to remove the hand so the the control region of the brain which handles the hand control uh, part should give a signal to remove your hand if that signal is not coming means your hand is something like having a paralysis so you should be able to remove the hand very quickly so uh, even uh, certain applications like when you when you try to play something called a uh, badminton right where shuttle cork is coming from that side you are having a bat on on your hand and when the shuttle cork comes normally what we do we will take a protractor from a, from a pocket and measure how much angle it is coming whether we will do like that normally uh, we, we will never do those type of things right similarly uh, we will take a, a speedometer from another pocket and measure the speed of the cork it is coming whether we will do like that we will never do those things so our our human eyes we are able to see the cork by seeing the cork which is coming 
the the signal is reaching the brain right sensory region of the eye it is extracting the angle by which it is coming it is estimating right some way or other way it is estimating without even knowing the exact uh, measurement of the angle it is coming the brain is estimating the speed without even knowing the exact speed right it is estimating from the images and after estimating that it is giving a control signal to the hand control signal to the hand so, the, so uh, after estimating all these things the the motor activation region, region of the hand gives a signal to your hand telling that you should align accordingly so bat is like that so here you have to align the bat accordingly and after some time you have to apply a force that signal also should come from the brain so when it comes you will apply a particular force and the the target will be somewhere where the person is not standing the person is standing on this side this side and we want to target that side and whether to have to target much behind or much forward so all the target estimate should come by from the images if you have a camera you know that you need more than four you will get more than 14 frames per second normally uh, a, a minimum 14 frames per second you will get so within a second you are getting 14 images and from that images you are understand the speed you want to understand the velocity right you want to understand the angle by which it is coming you should understand the uh, where where is the target and by understanding all of these things the brain should give a control signal to your hand and then you are applying a particular force so everything is from the uh, brain it is coming so it means that uh, the brain is doing certain type of things that is uh, that even a robot cannot do that if you have seen robots uh, if you assume that a robot is trying to play a badminton right so if a hand is there if a hand uh, if you want to move like our hand we need to have something more than two motors here more than two motors sir and the shoulder also we need to have more than two motors then all the motors you have to provide voltage sufficient voltage so that it will rotate accordingly and do that there are a lot of interesting uh, robotic videos you can see that how difficult is uh, to have like that so people started studying about the brain and started creating a uh, lot of things that is how the computational intelligence entirely evolved so we have to understand uh, the real need and necessity of uh, computational intelligence right so we have several applications if you start from the weather then climatology earth science astrophysics particle physics plasma physics material science chemistry nano science life science engineering everywhere computational applications there not only similar computational computational application we need to have something called computation intelligence also there because the problem that we are going to face there is so much uh, uh, complex and we cannot solve by normal uh, method of programming you should have something called intelligence there and that intelligence how you you will be able to provide those are the things that uh, we will be dealing here and uh, think about a particular uh, ex example uh, when we were trying to develop uh, drugs for malaria one malaria two uh, avian flu uh, like that right so if you uh, see here you will be able to understand in malaria one we were needing 41 million dockings and normally if you use a single cpu it may take even 80 cpu years and they have used something called 1700 cpus and uh, they try to solve that uh, uh, and they they are able to find out a drug similar in the case of malaria too it was needing something 142 million dockings and they were using something like 5000 uh, cpus and they were able to solve in the case of avian flu 4 million dockings were needed they were using 1700 uh, cpus and in the case of diabetics they are still trying to do that around uh, uh, 3 lakh uh, dockings and uh, the cpus that are used 7000 like that if you see uh, certain types of uh, biological and other problems that is need to be computationally solved we need something called sophisticated systems on one side that is why several types of parallel computing supercomputing everything evolves in the case of uh, avian flu also uh, you can see that uh, uh, 20000 dockings and uh, they were using something like one, 125 uh, CPU cores, EU Asia VO cores, and they were able to complete that. And uh, similarly, in the case of dengue fever, uh, around the three lakh dockings, and uh, they 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 are using something like 268 uh, CPU cores, and they are trying to find out the drug for that. That is one side of the scenario that we are having. In uh, another side, if you see that the complexity of the problems that we are talking about. 
and uh, once you see a picture here so you are seeing something here on the left uh, uh, top corner right and uh, can you imagine uh, whose face it is if somebody has seen my uh, talks earlier they may can understand quickly and uh, those who are new uh, just try to uh, answer uh, that uh, what type of uh, uh, whose image is that so i am trying to display some image right so uh, now somebody can try to answer so two portions of the uh, uh, face are there one more big portion i will show you will be able to answer it quickly now i hope that uh, some of you may be able to answer now one more portion of the picture i will show you you will definitely now say who oh, this uh, right so name of uh, aishwarya rai you will be talking about so the each and every portion of the image is talking about one particular application that is image processing application where if you are even taking about a face recognition this face recognition itself is having so much of uh, information from each and every portion of the image so complexity i am talking about the complexity is that you you are not seeing the image as it is but each portion of the image is having its own importance that is why even partial faces we are trying to recognize even if a person which uh, comes from very distance uh, very long distance we are able to recognize him by the way by which he walks the by the way by which he he is have uh, he is having his dress style and uh, his hair his facial uh, uh, things and all these things right even if he is not coming very near to us we are able to recognize and the brain is ha having the capability to recognize you understand everything is been stored efficiently on the brain and the brain is able to do those tasks and internationally if you see that if you want to try, if you try if you want to recognize that an object right normally we should have a small window like this right a small window like this and uh, we try to extract features from this particular window and we pass it to a classifier right l l suppose it uh, as a classifier is a svm we pass it to a classifier a trained classifier and it will predict presence and absence of an object and this particular window we will move throughout the uh, scene for example you are moving like this horizontally and in each and every portion right each when we move throughout from left to right each and every portion we try to extract features and pass it to a classifier and that classifier will predict the presence or absence of the object so throughout the image you have to move horizontally and also vertically right and at certain portions uh, when you try to extract the features and pass it to the classifier the classifier will predict that there is a bird right and uh, this this is a small window size and you have to try to increase the size of the window starting from small window to big window and for ever every scaling of the window size you have to do this experiment so that you will be able to uh, find out what is called as uh, uh, the the portion of uh, human beings also so that is that is how uh, do the task and when you think about the complexity still further we try to find out similarities right and you have something called uh, two different uh, uh, pictures here and you try uh, you ask a computer to try to distinguish between uh, two features whether uh, the uh, one belongs to human being another belongs to non human being or uh, the type of facial expression they are having or the type of emotion they are having if you ask them to uh, uh, recognize the complexity still becomes uh, certain general cases will be there even when you try to see most of the classification examples you will be able to see uh, uh, very difficult to achieve 100% classification most of the time you will have something like uh, 90 95 98 something like that when you get 100% classification means those examples where we are having uh, uh, fixed lighting condition so what it means is that um, if you are having a fixed lighting condition and the camera is fixed at one particular position for example in industrial application when they try to uh, find out the uh, problems in a small tablet if the tablet is damaged they will try to uh, remove it from uh, that actual packing right so there will be a fixed camera that the camera will be continuously observing the tablets which is moving and if there is a, a small problem on the damage on the tablet they will try to remove it right so the lighting condition will be fixed the camera will be fixed and the environment entirely is fixed so that uh, similarity identification will be easy defect identification will be easy but in real life situations when the camera is itself is moving and the lighting condition itself is changing then the difficulty level automatically increases 
right? The problem uh, is that the way that we try to understand uh, the problem as it is, we have uh, something called a data, uh, data, and that particular data, when we do the processing, we will get something called information. And most of the time, it so happens that this information itself is not sufficient for the common society. We need something more to do. So when you try to process this information, something we call as information processing, we will get a knowledge. And this information processing task is not so easy like data processing task. Here comes lot of issues. As I have already talking about uh, uh, badminton playing by a robot, assume that a uh, badminton is played by a robot. So how much uh, uh, the complexity will be there, right? You assume that you are trying to walk on a road. Right, so, uh, on something like a uh, 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 midnight, and there is no lighting. Is there very less lighting? Is there, and so, certain times assume that moonlight is available. Right, very less lighting. A person who uh, is also walking from my behind, so I found that one person is finding from behind. Suddenly, the person who is coming from my behind shouts, "Snake, snake, snake, snake." When he tries to say that snake, 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 what I should understand? Whether snake is in my front, whether a snake is falling from uh, top of the tree to my head, whether it is crossing on the road uh, just behind me, right? So I, I have something called ambiguity. I have something called vagueness. I have something called uncertainty. I don't know what is going to happen. Whether I have to jump, whether I have to run forward, I have to run backward. I have to, I, I have to move left side. I have to move right side. Nothing I know. Because he is having something called a information, he is shouting, right? Snake. I have to take sudden action. What type of action I should take? I suddenly I should know. Otherwise, what will happen? I will not be able to uh, say. I for certain times it may so happen that I will I have I will have a leg on the top of my snake. I think that I have to move forward. I will jump and I will really, I, my leg will be on the top of the snake. So a lot of issues will happen. So whenever we do this type of information processing, we cannot give the complete information of the things that it, uh, it is happening, right? For example, I am standing on the side of a road, and I am, I am speaking to somebody else. A big lorry that is coming on the road, and it is uh, coming very fast, and it, there is a possibility of hitting to me. A person who is uh, seeing from a distance, try to understand this situation, and trying to shout, move back. And try to shout something like "move back." There also, I should understand. He is telling "move back." He cannot say that uh, a big lorry is with uh, red in color coming at a speed of uh, this much uh, 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 meter per second, and it is going to hit uh, hit you. And if you want to save yourself, you move back. And whether he is targeting me, whether he is shouting at me, or he is shouting to somebody else, right? So everything there is something called ambiguity. There are uncertainty. Everything comes into picture. So in the real life situation, when the complexity increases, when we try to do information processing, we have uncertainty, vagueness, and ambiguity. We should be able to handle that pro in a proper way. That is very very important, right? This is the example that I am trying to uh, 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 say by various means. And suppose this this particular object is coming to his head. And it is coming at 45.3 meter per second, and it is having a kilogram weight of 1,500 kilogram. And this person is trying to say all the information of this particular object and the scenario. We are never going to save that particular person because it is coming at very high speed. Within a fraction of a second, it will fall on his head. So this information, that this estimation of the speed itself, it will take some time. So what it means that it is not so easy. For finding out the exact numerical value by estimation, because estimation itself will take time, and estimating the mass by by uh, knowing the gravity and other uh, the speed by which it is falling, the volume by which it is having, right? It is very difficult to understand. So these things, even if you know that, if you keep on in, uh, informing with all the type of uh, necessary information to him, we are not going to save this person. But if we have something like that, move back. Or look out, or something like that. We convert this information to something which is going to helpful for this particular person to move back from this location. So whenever this this particular uh, thing we call it as precision, we have high precision, 45 by exact detection of the speed, 
exact detection of the mass and we inform that person about the speed and mass there is no use so here there is no precision at all we have something called a significance and when we in all real life problems right, including cancer detection you have a uh, 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 a image of a ct image or mri image and the radiologists are sitting there and they want to detect a region where uh, this particular cell is cancerous or this particular cell is tumorous right they will have something called uh, ambiguity and the certain radiologists will sit together and they argue this cell does not uh, have this property of cancer and this uh, cell does not belong to a uh, tumor something like that so in all real life problems including cancer detection tumor detection all these things we have something called ambiguity uh, and um, other other things so in real life situations uh, uh, we we want to move away from precision towards significance whenever we try towards uh, uh, move from precision towards significance uh we lose this value right we certain times instead of telling 45.3 meter per second we will say it is coming at very high speed and instead of telling 1500 uh, kilogram we will be able to say that it is huge mass instead of speed exact speed we will uh, substitute with some words we will substitute with some words that itself will create something called uh, ambiguity vagueness and uncertainty so in real life problems we have uh certain times 50% precision and certain times we will have 50% significance and when you have when you really move away from precision all uncertainty vagueness and ambiguity comes into picture right so even uh, for the case of uh, uh, electronic tank developed by university of texas you can see on the top right it is very small it is showing on the hand hand uh, thing right so there also you will get signal about the electronic uh, tank and uh, when you have some food material here you will get electronic signal and there those signals will also have ambiguity uh, uh, and all these things and you can see electronic noses right various types of electronic noses small uh, electronic nose very big electronic nose electronic nose that moves through certain pipes where human beings are not able to go there also we can have ambiguity so it is very important to understand that in real life problem any type of real problem real type problem when you take you can see that certain types of ambiguity vagueness and uh, uncertainty comes into picture and you should have some mechanism to handle similar to that of our brain our brain is doing those this task even without having numerical values in all examples you can you can understand that there comes the need and necessity of computational intelligence from the previous slides i was trying to explain you the need and necessity of com computation intelligence in the real life situations when you are try to solve those problems using computers because we are handling with information and we want that information to be converted into knowledge that is what we are doing something called information processing where there the entire problem will be certain times highly complex and we will have uncertainty vagueness and ambiguity and we need to have some mechanisms to handle all these things so when you talk about computation intelligence we have to see that what is actually computation intelligence according according to bigger societies available in the world one of the bigger society if you see is that is something called ieee computational intelligence society if you just search on the google ieee computational intelligence society you can see that the ieee computational society gives major importance to three different categories of things one called the learning capability provided by artificial neural network and the second is called the optimization capability provided by evolutionary computation and the third one is the representation capability provided by fuzzy logic you can go to various societies right different societies have different targets i am talking about ieee computation intelligence society where the they talk about the three important aspects there are other aspects are also available they will there will be something called overlapping for example this artificial neural network uh, is overlapping with machine learning right all machine learning algorithms you will be talking of you might have heard about the last uh, last 3 to 4 days right and this will overlap with artificial neural network also because artificial neural network is also part of machine learning right but this computation intelligence society uh, ieee intelligence society talks about artificial neural network as part of what is called as learning capability and similarly 
we whenever we have some system either it is a machine learning system or some other system we need to optimize it once we train and we we fix it when a new data comes into picture we want to optimize it right or initially we we have a dumb, uh, dummy uh, uh, machine learning algorithm that we want to optimize it we need a optimization capability right for that uh, we have something called nature inspired computing or evolutionary computation so this evolutionary computation falls under nature inspired computing right so this ieee computation engineering society makes a major focus on evolutionary computation that provides us what is called as optimization capability for all, most of the machine learning algorithms and similarly we are talking about ambiguity uncertainty and uh, vagueness in order to handle these these things this uh, ieee computation engineering society gives major focus on the representation capability based on fuzzy logic you have other types of things like you have rough sets you have probability theory you have other uh, major components which provide you capability to handle uncertainty vagueness and ambiguity but ieee computation intelligence society provides major importance to fuzzy logic because of this three things the ieee computation intelligence society have three major journals one journal on art, uh, artificial uh, ieee transaction on neural networks and learning uh, systems and you have ieee transaction on evolutionary computation you have ieee transaction on uh, fuzzy systems right so we will be dealing uh, going deeply inside one, one one by one and with some examples so that you will be able to understand it uh, uh, more clearly so first we will uh, move to uh, the applications of computation intelligence we will have several applications we have applications in uh, siemens heavy industry we have applications in ho home appliances uh, like ho sony siemens and all these things are producing uh, various equipments we have applications of computation in auto automobiles right uh, uh, mitsubishi da daimler and all these things you can uh, bmw everywhere we can see applications of computation intelligence even spacecraft nasa is uh, using computation intelligence techniques for their uh, systems right so now we will move to one of the things called uh, uh, this optimization capability in this optimization capability evolutionary computation is one part in evolutionary computation itself there are various flavors available and inside evolutionary computation we have one particular uh, flavor of evolutionary computation we call as genetic algorithm in my talk i will be providing some details about this uh, genetic algorithm and this genetic algorithm is uh, a very simple very powerful and general purpose and the derivative fee algorithm derived from the darwinian there's a uh, there was a professor called darwin uh, who provided uh, concepts about the natural evolution in nature you can see so many optimization thing that is happening and from that optimization he is having so much of theory about optimization and based on the optimization theory of darwin concept this genetic algorithm is been evolved here we will have three things one called selection another called uh, crossover and the third one called mutation and we continuously do this particular task to get an optimal solution even if it is a machine learning right if you have a svm if you have a neural network where you want, where you want to learn the weights you can use genetic algorithm or other flavors like evolutionary computation or any other nature inspired computing you can use for optimizing the weights optimizing the parameters of a support vector machine optimizing the parameters of uh, other learning mechanisms right so this can be used as a optimi optimization mechanisms uh, which provides optimal optimization capability for any computation intelligent system so here initially we want to generate a, a population after creating the population we want to evaluate the population how much it is fit and then we want to check whether optimization has been reached or not if it is not reached we have to do three different functions one called selection then call uh, crossover then call mutation and then we continue this for several number of generations and finally we will get something called an uh, optimal solution for that uh, 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 we will try to see small examples in matlab also so that you will be able to understand and uh, there are so many applications of uh, genetic algorithm you can just uh, search in google uh, you can find it out uh, there are optimization uh, methods to optimize gas pipeline uh, pole balancing missile aviation right in the domain of control system in the uh, in the domain of design 
how uh, authentic algorithm can help you to optimize the semiconductor layout aircraft design keyboard design communication networks in the case of scheduling uh, for example manufacturing resource allocation in the case of robotics you can uh, you can optimize uh, trajectory planning in the case of machine learning you want to design uh, you want to find the optimize the uh, uh, neural network architecture you want to optimize the weights right you want to improve the classification you, right in the signal processing if you want to have a filter design in the games of game playing you should have something called uh, various games where you want to optimize in the case of other optimizations like travel salesman problem uh, routing uh, graph coloring and all these things so several applications are just search in google you will be able to understand how much set of applications are there uh, that one particular part is this machine learning right that you are talking this fdp is talking about so uh, we have to create initially a population i think partly when we see that we will partly go to matlab also try to uh, see the demo we have to create a initial population where uh, we have different chromosomes we say this each each individual is a chromosome and this particular uh, chromosome uh, is nothing but a solution right we say this is a chromosome this chromosome is nothing but a solution for a for your problem that solution may not be optimal each chromosome will provide a solution but the solution may not be optimal and each of the chromosomes is a solution but the solution is not a optimal solution and the chromosome is nothing but can be considered as a set of genes you can see a set of values and each each gene this this we call it as a gene and each gene correspond to a particular parameter that you want to optimize in a problem this another gene that you want to optimize in a problem this is another gene that you want to optimize in problem so all the parameters that you want to optimize certain times if you want to optimize a neural network you want to optimize the weights w1 w2 w3 etc wn these w1 up, up to wn will form the genes and suppose you are having a convolution neural network you are having filters so inside that filters you have uh, weights right filter filter values 3 by 3 filter you have nine values right if you have another filter so 5 by 5 filter we have 5 into 5 25 values so all these values but inside the filter become parts of the genes right you can consider each of the values as a genes so first you want to construct a chromosome like this and inside the chromosome you should have a genes and these genes are the parameters that you want to uh, want to optimize in a problem it is a normal neural network the weights it will come weights if it is a convolution neural network all the filter values will become the genes so all the genes together if you make it as a single vector that vector we consider as a chromosome that vector the values of those vectors can be either real value can you can directly have a real value or the the values can be